In question nine of the series, we're asked, what two positive numbers whose product is 100 have the least possible sum? The hard part when it comes to optimization problems is coming up with an equation that works. We have two positive numbers. We don't know what they are. I'll call the first positive number A and the second positive number B. And we're told that these two positive numbers have a product of 100, meaning that if we multiply them together, A times B, we end up with 100. And if we add A and B together, we end up with a sum which we want to minimize. So a plus b is equal to a sum s. Notice that we have three unknowns here, a, b, and s. That's a problem for us. When it comes to optimization problems, you want usually a maximum of two unknowns. So what we can do is rewrite this first equation so that it's in terms of the other variable. And that's really easy to do. Take a look at this. a times b is equal to 100, or a is equal to 100 over B. Now I can substitute 100 over B in place of A, and that will represent A mathematically. So I have 100 over B plus B is equal to S. This is my A, this is my B, my two positive numbers, and I want to minimize the sum. Now I've produced an equation that has two unknowns. The next thing that you want to do is find out the derivative and then set the derivative equal to zero. By setting the derivative equal to zero, you're actually finding the critical points of that function. The critical points always tell us that there is a local maximum or minimum at those points. And there are several tests that you can use to find out if it is a maximum or minimum. We'll do that part later. Let's go ahead and find the derivative implicitly in terms of b. The derivative of 100 over b, well, we'll need to use the power rule here, but remember, 100 over b is the same thing as saying 100 times b to the power of negative 1. So if we use the power rule here, this negative 1 gets multiplied to the 100. So we have negative 1 times 100 b, and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So the derivative here is equal to negative 100 over b to the power of 2. I'll replace that with this expression. The derivative of b is simply 1. And the derivative of s is ds over db. Because remember, we are finding the derivative with respect to b. Next, I'll set ds over db equal to 0. And I'll solve for b to the power of 2. By first bringing this over, I end up with negative 1 negative 100 over b to the power of 2. If I multiply both sides right now by negative 1, I'll end up with these negatives disappearing. Next, I'll multiply both sides by b to the power of 2. Look what happens. This cancels out, and we're left with 100 is equal to b to the power of 2. Square rooting both sides, we end up with b is equal to plus minus 10. Now, since we are told that the two numbers are positive, we can disregard this negative 10. So b is only equal to 10. This is one of our critical points. We don't know if this is a maximum or minimum. So what we can do to find out if that is a maximum or minimum is take the second derivative. Subsequently, once you take the second derivative, you substitute this value into the second derivative. If the second derivative comes out to be positive, then it's a minimum. If it's negative, then it's a maximum. That's called the second derivative test, and I do have a video dedicated to that exactly. So let's go ahead and find the second derivative of this function. ds over db was equal to negative 100 over b squared plus 1. Taking the second derivative, this becomes d squared s over db squared is equal to the derivative of this, well, once again, we need to use the power rule. And we stopped right there before. If I use the power rule, I end up with, and this part stays the way it is, we have negative 1 times negative 2 times 100 
b to the power of negative 3. Subtracting this by minus 1 gives me the following expression. And we can rewrite this so that it looks like this. Negative times negative is positive. 200 over b to the power of 3. Taking the derivative of a constant is 0. And now I will substitute b is equal to 10 into here. 200 over 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. And this is 1 over 5. This number is positive, meaning that 10 is a minimum point. So to summarize, the question asked what two positive numbers had a product of 100 and have the least possible sum. Those two numbers are 10 and 10, because substituting this 10 back into here gives you an A of 10. And there you have it. That is how to solve optimization problems in calculus. Make sure to watch question 10 for another example.